Hello, my name is John Pither and I'm going to show you how to use Crux together with SQL using some simple steps. Step 1. Let's set up our project. So here we have a depths.eden project and here I'm specifying the RocksDB module dependency and I'm also specifying the SQL module dependency. Below I have some simple dev dependencies that I will use to help the developer workflow. Step 2. Let's set up our Crux node. Here I have a namespace where I'm configuring a Crux node topology. Here I'm specifying I want the Crux standalone topology. And here I'm specifying that I want RocksDB as the key value store to house the local indexes. And here I'm specifying that I want the Crux Calcite module. Calcite is a library built by Apache to provide queryability over arbitrary data sources. We're using Calcite to provide SQL queryability over Crux. So now I've got my Crux node topology. Down here, I've got some code using Integrant to allow me to set up a system in the REPL. So now, in the REPL, I can use Reset to fire up my Crux node. Before we go further, I now want to set up some test data. So in this namespace, I have a function for creating a random person. And here, if I go to the REPL and type random person, and we can see that a random person has been generated. Here we have a Crux ID, which is a UUID. We have a name, a last name, a sex, an age, and a salary. So here we have some code that takes a hundred of these randomly generated people and submits them into Crux as transaction put operations. Now we can go to the REPL and we can do a normal Crux data log query to find me all of the names for those entities that we've transacted. And here we go. We can see we have some of those randomly generated people. So now we have some data within our Crux node, we now need to set up a SQL table schema so that we can do some SQL queries. So in order to do SQL queries, we need the concept of a SQL table. Here, we're specifying a Crux SQL table schema. Here you can see, this is the ID of this Crux table schema document. And this is the table name. So person is going to be what we select from in our SQL queries. Here we're specifying this is the Crux data log query that ultimately backs this table. So all of the results from this query will appear in the table. And here we're specifying some metadata about the columns that we can expect to come back from the SQL query. Here we're saying that ID is a keyword and we're saying that name is a varchar, a string. So this is a SQL data log backed query that produces two columns, ID and name and the name of the table is person. We put this table schema document in as a normal document into Crux as a put transaction operation. There we go, we are now ready to do SQL queries against this table. So here I have a SQL command line client. I should be able to see if our table is present. And here we can see that we have the person table. I now should be able to do a select from person, select star from person, and here we can see we have our randomly generated people. And you can also do the kind of things that you would expect to be able to do with SQL. So here I'm going to do a group by, select name and count star from person, group by name. And as you can see, because we inserted lots of random people, but we've only got eight names, there's lots of entries here for each one of those names i.e. there's 13 Dimitris. I also want to show you that we can do our SQL queries using good old closure from the REPL. Because the Crux node fires up Calcite in process, we've got everything we need to be able to do SQL queries. Here I'm going to set up a JDBC connection. Note, this uses a function, JDBC connection, which is exposed in the Crux Calcite namespace. This is there for you to use. This takes one argument, which is a Crux node, and now we can do a query against this JDBC connection. Here I have a helper namespace that defines a query function that uses standard Java interop to execute SQL statements against a JDBC connection and it turns the result set that it gets back into a normal seek. And now I can do a simple SQL query and I can take the first five results. 
and here we go. Before you go, I just want to show you what is possible in the way of updating our schemas that we use to generate the tables. So if you remember from earlier, this is our table schema document that we put into Crux that allows us to do SQL queries against the person table. Well, let's add another column to this table. Let's add age. Let's add another triple that defines the age var. There we go. And now we need to give age a data type. We're going to give it a big int because big int correlates to long, which is what we typically use in Clojure. So here we go. We've ingested a new version of this table schema. Now let's try and do a query. Select all from person. And as you can see, we've got age. So now we've modified the table schema document that was in place and our SQL queries immediately reflect this change. This means that we can have different versions that are transacted into Crux for the various table schemas that we've used to execute our SQL queries. And one last thing, whilst we're here, I want to show that we can do efficient join queries using multiple tables. Here I've added an employee table and it has an ID, a name and a salary. It's going to use the same data that we ingested earlier. It's just a different view using a different SQL table. So now we can go back to the SQL tool and we can do a select star from employee. And here we go. If we wanted to, we could now do a join between employee and person. And we can join on the ID because the IDs should be the same. And here we're doing an inner join. Using this SQL tool, I can also explain the query plan for this query and here I'm asking for a plan for that join statement that we just did. And here you can see we've got Crux doing the heavy lifting for this query. What we can see here is a single Crux table scan which equates to a single Crux data log query for the entire query and that's what we want to see. We want to see joins efficiently handled so that we can do a single Crux query as opposed to a query per table. There we go, thanks for watching this video. You can see all of this code that I've been playing around with at github.com slash jumphither slash crux sql demo. Please also visit all of the documentation that's there at opencrux.com. And you can see all of the source code for crux at github.com slash jux slash crux. Soon I'll be releasing a follow-up video on how to do bitemporal sql queries. But for now, enjoy the sequel, and if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at crux at jux.pro. Thank you. Goodbye.